when I was feeling most alone like uh, and hopeless. Uh, during those times, I felt like it's it wouldn't be... I didn't feel like it was a matter of when I would be able to meet a girl like romantically. I was wondering if I would ever meet a girl romantically. Like, am I going to die single? That is a really, really depressing place to be. Every day with you is just like the first day that we met. Filled with excitement and adventure. I give you my heart and I surround you with my love. I give you my strength so we can persevere through all of life's adventures together. William, when I met you only eight years ago, you were probably the last person on earth I wanted to be like. <laughs> you were you were stiff, uptight, awkward, unfunny, unemotional, and ambiguously gay. So my first impression of William, I thought he was incredibly confident when he walked up to me to introduce himself. Um, and when I first met him, he was wearing this super tight black shirt with an ET um, image on the t-shirt and he was wearing uh, a earring. I think I forgot on which year. Um, and he just, you know, exuded a lot of energy and um, he was very, he was just very confident. Hi, my name is Kevin Tang. I'm the founder of Amped Asia. I got a chance to go inside the pickup artist industry and talk to JT Tran, the founder of the ABCs of Attraction and check out one of his boot camps. And at the same time, I also met his instructor, William Lee, who's about to get married. So I'm extremely excited to show you the documentary and I uh, hope you enjoy. Welcome to New York. We are here to do a program to change some lives. Hey guys, and welcome to the ABCs of Attraction Boot Camp. This weekend is very special because it is the last boot camp that William, one of my former students turned instructor, will be teaching, all right? He is getting married next week and I have the honor of actually officiating my first wedding. Hi, my name is JT Tran and I am America's number one agent dating coach. I founded the ABCs of Attraction over 10 years ago. Hi, my name is William. I am 35 years old. I'm a computer programmer in the financial sector and I was a former ABCs of Attraction student and also coach and I'm going to be getting married next week. I, William Lee, I, William Lee, take you to be my wife. Take you to be my wife. You know that bicycle, I like it. Digital age. <laughs> Honey, every day with you is just like the first day that we met. Filled with excitement and adventure. I give you my heart and I surround you with my love. I give you my strength so we can persevere through all of life's adventures together. I give you all of my creativity so we can have a lifetime of super awesome date nights. <laughs> I give you my shoulder to lean on when you need some support. I promise to massage your feet after a long day of work. Aww. Aww. All the love that I have, I give to you in unlimited abundance. When I am with you, I always feel emotionally full. And I will give that fullness back to you forever. William is one of my former students turned instructors, and he's actually retiring this year because he's getting married. Now, 
The interesting thing about William is not only was he a former student, he was a student that is sort of like very typical of all my other students out there in the fact that not only is he Asian American, but he is one of the brightest people that I know, but at the time I met him, one of the most loneliest. He was highly educated, he worked on Wall Street, but when he learned about my program, he was in Taiwan. He was literally in Taiwan because at the age of 30, he calculated on average that he had been on two dates per year. Not dating two women per year, but like two dates, period, per year. And he was like 30 years old and he was just ready to throw on the towel. He was literally in Taiwan. He was gonna move there and get himself an Asian village wife, right? He's gonna get it like a mail order bride. That was how frustrated he was dating in America. And this is a guy that on paper, he was a perfect boyfriend, all right? On paper, he was perfect. He was like working on Wall Street, working out, did a lot of community service, and he had everything going for him, but he could not get a date for the life of him. So when I taught him, he followed directions so well, but it was sort of like really scary in the fact that he followed directions to the letter. He did not deviate and that actually ended up being one of the reasons why he became so successful. He didn't know anything about dating and so he came in with an empty cup and he just absorbed all this knowledge and despite the embarrassment of rejection and anxiety, he pushed himself and he actually achieved a lot of success on his boot camp and well afterwards to the point where he was like dating literally like dozens upon dozens of women every year until I actually asked him to be part of my team and he ended up coaching successfully all these students who ended up getting their own relationships until one day he decided you know what I want to get married and that's what he ended up doing he actually ended up meeting his future wife at the first club he'd ever been to, which was the club that I took him on his boot camp. So I'm extremely proud of what William is able to accomplish and I'm very honored that he has asked me to preside over his wedding. Yeah, grab that ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met JT, I didn't really have a good impression of him because I just thought, who the hell is this guy? He's like really short, like how the hell is he going to teach me anything? Uh, and that was like, you know, in the first like two second snap judgment. But then after we started the lecture and I started hearing the stuff that he was teaching us about the ABCs of attraction structure and how it works and, and what you do and why, then I can kind of see the organization and uh, I was kind of thinking, hey, this guy's a nerd just like me, but he figured this out. The ABCs of Attraction is unique as a dating empowerment company than any other business in the industry. It goes beyond how we're uniquely positioned to help Asian men in ways that no other company can. But also, we're the only company to be privileged at being invited to teach at Ivy League universities like Harvard, Yale, UPenn, and more. It all goes back to how I got started and what I found in my company, the ABCs of Attraction. Originally, I was writing in an underground blog called the Asian Playboy blog as a hobby, right? In it, I wrote my experiences in dating from my rejections and humiliation to my growing romantic successes. I included my adventures and misadventures and I completely put myself out there to be judged. It was sex in the city for Asian men. And it gained a huge following across a broad spectrum of people. So broad in fact that one of my readers was actually a Chinese Canadian mother who called me up. She wanted me to help out her son who had been harassed by neo-Nazis in high school. He refused to make friends and had never been on a date because he was so traumatized by the experience. It was a huge responsibility to take this teenage boy and mold him into man and who could take this negative experience and using it as a springboard into his own positive self-development. So I told her, 
Ma'am, for three days and three nights, I'm going to be the big brother he never had. And that's how the ABCs of Attraction got started. And why it's so completely different from any dating business out there, especially any Caucasian owned business. Because we got started not because we wanted to be financially successful or meet women, <laughs> that's obviously a factor, right? But because the core of my mission statement is to help my fellow Asian brothers be successful because we're Asian men and not in spite of it. I want to affect positive change on not only the individual level, but also at the absolute top levels of society. After all, if we don't see the kind of positive change in the world that we would like to see, then it's up to us to be that positive change. No one is going to make Asian men more attractive, confident, and sexual in the eyes of society and women. It's up to each of us Asian men to individually be that positive change and role models for ourselves and for others. And that's what makes the ABC of the Attraction Bootcamp so powerful. My clients not only learn a solid foundation of success and get instant effective results, but they're also able to build a holistic lifestyle that is positively changing society's perception of us Asian men. All right, this is his last boot camp, and he's going to give all his knowledge to you guys before passing on to an even greater adventure. So let's give it up to William. Hey. So um, go ahead, tell them a little bit about yourself, your first night, and any kind of words of encouragement that they might expect that you yourself haven't gone through and been in their shoes. Okay. It's an honor to be here. Um, I feel like it was just yesterday that I was in your seats learning this stuff from JT that you're about to learn tonight. Um, at that point in my life, I was so depressed and I had no skills with women and I had absolutely no idea how to even connect with a girl in conversation, much less be with her in a romantic relationship. And I worked through all of the steps of the ABCs of Attraction structure. I worked really hard that weekend, like you guys will this weekend. And uh, my life now is so much better than it used to be. And, uh, and I really hope you guys have the same success. Asian men, both here in America and overseas in Asia, need to learn how to be better boyfriends and learn how to attract women regardless of their race, culture, and country of origin. You see, by 2020, there will be over 30 million Chinese men who will not be able to marry Chinese women because there literally aren't enough Chinese women to go around because of China's one-child policy and female infanticide. That doesn't even include the gender disparity that exists in Korea, India, Vietnam, Japan, and other countries. It's good for Asian women because women can now demand a higher premium on the dating market where millennial Chinese women expect their man to earn twice as much as the national average salary. But not so good for Asian men because not only does that dating pressure cooker affect everyone in Asia, but also those of us Asian men living here in America. So if Asian men can no longer earn his way into a woman's heart through traditional dating, what's he to do? Well, that's where I come in. Instead of showering a woman with money, I teach men how to shower her with charm, confidence, and authenticity. And now, I proudly present to you, your new bride and groom, Ed William. William, when I met you only eight years ago, you were probably the last person on earth I wanted to be like. You were, you were stiff, uptight, awkward, unfunny, unemotional, and ambiguously gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. When I was down and I felt bad about myself, I would look at you and say, thank God I'm not angry. <laughs> But that was before I got to know you. When I did get to know you, I found out I was a lot like you. That we grew up the same way, we had a lot of the same hopes and the same fears, and I had no idea that you would become one of my best friends. And not, not just that, but someone I would envy. So you, you, you always tell me that, you, that I taught you a lot. But the truth is that you taught me a lot. I mean, you, you taught me how to live, man. 
A little bit about myself is I was not born tall, dark, and handsome, or as well as you might think I am. I wish I was, but you know what? I can settle for being short, stunning, and smooth. You see, I didn't kiss my first girl at the age of 20, all right? I went to prom by myself. I was such a loser. I'd never been on a date. I did not know how to date anyone. And I thought at the time, like, you know, is this what life is? And I thought maybe being Asian or being short or not being good looking was turning girls off. And, you know, I was born in the South, so I dealt with a lot of racism and prejudice growing up. And it was only until college when I actually got my first girlfriend, this five foot nine blonde, very pretty blue eyed girl. And she chose me. Like I was quite frankly lucky. It was not intentional. And she chose me out of like all these guys. And the thing is looking back, I actually realized I accidentally used some psychological kind of principles of confidence that attracted her to me. But it was it was purely by mistake. It was not intentional. I did not know what I was doing. And she was a girl that I fell in love with. We moved in together and you know lost my virginity to her and it was an amazing experience being in my first relationship with someone of a different race and that sort of opened my eye that I could potentially be successful but then when I moved to LA to pursue my degree in aerospace engineering yes I am a rocket scientist <laughs> I did work for like NASA and Air Force like contracts on satellites and, and those things but moving to LA I realized I sucked with women I woefully sucked with women so badly. I tried online dating like eHarmony, Match.com, and I remember this is the time when you had to fill out personality tests, right? And when you send in the results, they give you back the results, and I got back the answer from eHarmony, and they rejected me. Apparently, I am too cerebral to ever get a match with them, so they rejected my application. And it was only until like, I read an article by Neil Strauss with Mystery that I realized maybe I could learn this. Maybe it wasn't simply just up to luck because I that was the only way women I'd ever been with any kind of woman was she chose me. Like I had no options, I had no choice. Either the girl liked me or didn't. I had absolutely no say in the manner and it was kind of pathetic to be honest. But then when I, I learned about this, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I have some control over this. So I started studying like psychology, dating and pickup and uh, one thing led to another. I think this, you know, started this thing called the Asian Playboy blog. Uh, and yeah, that, that's who I am. I read a whole variety of self-help books, uh, all different kinds, um, public speaking and, and how to interact with people and, and how, to, how to find your true calling in life and things like that. But there was one book that I got in Urban Outfitters, I think in 2002. It was called How to Succeed with Women. And it was the cheesiest comp compilation of all kinds of weird advice that made no sense. I mean, now I know it makes no sense, but at the time I thought it was like totally awesome. And that kind of thing was the closest kind of resemblance to, to, to pickup artists that, that I knew of at the time. But I didn't know that there would be people that you could hire and that would teach you everything. My students, yes, you know, majority of my students are Asian, uh, either Asian American or Asian foreign born, but I would say like 50 to 75% of my students are Asian. I do get a lot of white students, Hispanic students, even some black students, as well as a lot of Europeans because they also kind of face the same language barrier that some of my foreign Asian students. But I think, you know, other than being like, white collar, educated, well-meaning. A lot of my students really, they want to be with someone. They want to be with someone that they can love. They, I mean, because that's what all of us want to, to do. We want to be with someone. We have a biological drive to be with someone at the end of the day. Now, we go through our life and the journey when it comes to meeting women. It's sort of like, you know, when you're uh, uh, the growth of like a knight to a prince to a king, right? When you're a knight and you're a knight errant, you're going off to different lands and slaying dragons in every different country. And then you slowly turn into a prince and you, and you build your kingdom and you're, and you're looking for your, your queen. And finally, when you find your queen, you have a kingdom and you're, you're a king. And so with my students, they're on that quest. They're on that quest to find themselves, to, to be better men, to have 
have adventures and to slay different dragons until they can find their princess and to be with someone. Because these guys, you know, some of them, yes, they do want to be players and, you know, sure, that's great. But a lot of them, they just want to choose their girlfriend. They're tired of being lonely because that's what they're used to. They're tired of the media just just espousing like negative things about them that they're short and they're ugly or you know because they're Asian they're not confident and masculine so they want choice in their dating because up until now they haven't had it they've either been super lucky or in a lot of cases they've never even had a girlfriend right and they just want that choice with girls they want like honestly a quality girlfriend and that's not true of everybody but I think that's true of the vast majority of my students and they're walking off together <laughs> So on the first day of boot camp, it was really interesting. I, I got to meet all the people, right? And it was, everyone was, it was just a mix of different personalities. There was Nigel, who was a very, he was very fobby, you know, he was, he, his hair was a mess, right? And then there was uh, Kevin, who was very shy. He seemed very shy and reserved. And then there was Ian, who was, he seemed like he, he knew how to talk, but the way he was talking just it, it seemed a little weird the way he was trying to uh, articu articulate certain things, right? And then we had Scott, who was the lone white guy. And then we had another Kevin, actually, who, who was pretty cool dude. Um, all these guys, their personalities were just very, uh, just a very mix mash of different personalities. And it was good to, to meet them and see, you know, who are the people that need uh, dating coaching, right? Hello, my name is Kevin. I am 22. I have just graduated from the University of Rochester and I am currently applying to medical school. Hi everyone, my name is Nigel. Uh, I'm in college right now. I'm a junior. I'm studying a finance at one of the universities in Iowa and uh, I'm from Malaysia. Well, so my name is Ian. Uh, my parents are in New York but I've been living on the West Coast for the last several years. Hey, I'm Scott Cummins. I'm from West Virginia, and I'm currently a college student at Fairmont State University. Just living the life. To uh, this point, I've gotten a fair number of dates, a fair number of numbers, um, fair number of second dates, third, one third date and continuing on as well. Um, unfortunately, I... Um, couldn't quite enter a relationship that I wanted to enter because I was actually moving within the next uh, two months, so... I can approach women easily, but I find that it's hard for me to escalate it. Um, I go on dates once in a like probably once in a month. I, I do have um, the ability to ask girls out and get the phone numbers, but um, for the past few months I've been getting quite a lot of flicks and I must be wondering what's going on. And I'm also uh, having a problem, as I said, to escalate sexually. That's what, one of the key concerns that I have. And that's why I want to attend this boot camp. I think that I have some trouble sexually escalating with women I've just met. And I think it holds me back a little bit. So I can definitely approach women. I have no problem talking to them. Um, one issue is knowing when they actually like, like me. And the other one is um, following through once I get the numbers. I would go to kiss a girl and she would pull back because I think what my problem was was that I had failed to really elicit her interest. Like actually me being interested in her and she would feel like it was fake or something. One of my most embarrassing uh, stories of my uh uh, relationship life uh, occurred where I had just gotten um, blown off by a girl I've been pursuing for the better part of my college career. At that point I realized there has to be a better way to do this. My goal through this boot camp is I guess to initially date multiple multiple girls first just to know um, and gain experience but as time goes by I think I would just settle for one girl and that's what I want to do. With Men, we want a lot of times to have an emotional connection when we have sex, make love, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, for some guys, that's what they're looking for. And bless them, sure, great. But for some other guys, especially Asian guys, where we have a more 
cultural imperative to get married, they want to meet a woman that they could date to have a quality girlfriend and maybe like get married. But definitely the first step is that physical sexual component because without that sexual chemistry it is going to be more difficult to you know choose to you know be with someone that you want to be with the rest of your life because that chemistry is definitely vital to have but so is that emotional chemistry and and finding that right person that has both that's that's a journey that is something that we all have to embark upon and it's not something that's easily found and that's definitely something that I try to help my students be successful at what you can expect out of this boot camp is a lot of success. Ultimately though, I don't want you to define yourself by like who's the best. I want you to judge yourself by your personal best. But you're all here on some level because you want to be more successful with women. Maybe that's to get a lot of legs under your belt. I don't know, that's a personal choice. Maybe you want to get a girlfriend. Maybe you want to get multiple girlfriends. Maybe you want to get married like William. I'm not here to tell you which choice to make. Now, attitude is the inner game when it comes to how you view yourself all right, in relationship to girls. What do you think girls think when you approach them? Now, some guys have a really good kind of attitude about it. Some guys don't. All right? Once upon a time, I used to think because I was short, girls weren't attracted to me. Who's ever thought that, that I'm short, that girls aren't attracted to short guys? Right? Who here is thought that I'm Asian, so white girls will not be attracted to me? I thought that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, and these are limiting beliefs. These are beliefs that have been taught to us, you know, by society, by the media. It is true that dating for Asian men is slightly different than it is for other guys. You see, the problem with society today are all the negative stereotypes about Asians that either hypersexualizes Asian women as fetishized sex objects or emasculates Asian men as weak, effeminate foreigners. This obviously has a negative effect on our confidence growing up. And I want to help my Asian students to be confident and succeed because they're Asian and not in spite of it. But beyond the media perceptions of Asian men and fighting against our own internalized racism, Asian men have to embody the kind of confidence that gets us noticed as potential dating partners. We have to step up even harder than everyone else because either we aren't noticed in the first place or when we are noticed, we potentially have to deal with prejudice, stereotypes, and racism. Also, what works for a tall, good-looking, and Caucasian male is not always going to work for an Asian American male. Then there's a the fact that many Asians are foreign born and don't speak English as a first language, which lends itself to a totally different set of problems. When I teach my students, I don't take a one size fits all attitude. What works for me isn't necessarily going to work for one of my black students or white students. So I have to adjust for that. And what works for a tall Asian American male might not be the same for a short, fobby Asian guy who barely speaks English. However, in all of those cases, I've been able to show each of them the guiding overall principles of social skills and how it applies to their context so that they can use what works in their specific situations and discard what does not fit in their cultural background. Before I took the boot camp and kind of figured it all out, I, I had, you know, maybe 20 or 30 like ideas in my head of things that I would not be able to overcome and these are just so stupid thinking about it now um, but so the first one is I can't date white women uh, or actually I'm not good enough to date white women so that's that was like a huge like mental barrier it's not that anybody told me I can't it's not that there was any real evidence of it it was just in my head and uh, something that was so ingrained inside me that I probably repeated to myself over and over again, it permeated every interaction I had. I'm sure at this point you're all thinking that, you know, if only I had the right thing to say to her, it would be better. You know, like, it would make things so much easier. But the reality is, what's the oldest pickup line in the book, guys? Oldest pickup line. Hi. Hi. Exactly. Oldest pickup line. And it's successful. 
and every city, every state, every continent is basically high and it works. So it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And once you start to get even better and better, you realize it's not even how, it's where do I take her? Where do I take her on an emotional journey? And where do I physically take her? All right? Then you'll learn that that's the difference between beginners, the average, and the experts. All right? That's how we think. Uh, so after I was kind of at the tail end of beginner's hell and, and just kind of navigating my way out of beginner's hell and, and mastering the, the structure and the steps and, and everything that needs to be done in order to, to really connect with girls. After I got to that point, I would, I would basically say that that point in my life was where I was in complete control of everything I wanted to do. I, at that point I had no barriers. Every single thing that I thought was limiting me uh, just didn't exist anymore. Like, can't date white women? Now I can. Can't go to nightclubs? Now I can. Can't meet girls like in the daytime at like say a supermarket, the bookstore, Starbucks, you know? Now I can. So, so at that point in time it was just all options that I wanted were on the table. So then I just went after what I wanted. I think one of the, the most important factors of my success was my persistence. Um, I was very persistent in really, really testing out every single aspect of the ABC structure to see if it would work. Because I'm getting this new information, I know it works for JT, he told me it works for him, so I'm trying it now. So every single nitty gritty part of it, I would test it in a million different ways and a million different combinations in all different kinds of social situations. And that kind of persistence is not for everybody. Um, but, if, but since I put in the work, it, it yielded me a lot of returns. I had not even been in a nightclub before we had the first field outing. So whenever I brain farted, I just fell back on exactly what JT said to do. So that way I don't have to think, it's easy. So if you can remember stuff and follow instructions, it's great. Uh, just to give you guys an example, this is a very much the quintessential William story. So William, who had never been to a club or a bar ever, right, was driven the goal of talking to 10 girls. Because we didn't really know what he was capable of, right? So it was like, William, talk to 10 girls. That's all you gotta do, just talk to 10 girls. So he ends up on the first night of boot camp, going home on the sixth girl. The sixth group of girls, he brought her home. So about 1.30, all right, I'm having a smoke, and I see this taxi cab roll up with William, and he's in a different shirt and everything like that. And what do you think happened, right? It's like he got rejected. Like he went home, they made out, he got rejected, or she said no, or, or something like that, right? So he came back, and I was like, well, it's okay. We haven't talked about like ASD or LMR, or like foreplay or anything like that. You know, that's like later down in the, in the curriculum. But then he said, like, no, 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 Dizzy. I actually fully connected with her. So I was like, wait a minute, so why are you back here at the club? I said, well, JT, you told me I had to talk to 10 girls, and I've only talked to six. So I have four more girls to talk to. I don't really remember exactly how I worked this out, but somewhere in the middle there, I was able to take a shower, get changed into a different outfit, <laughs> and then, and then I, I either escorted her to a cab or somehow did a combination of these things and then I eventually got back. You just follow the plan. All right? You guys follow all the step, it, you know, it will solve a lot of your issues. The structure is just that. It's just a structure. It's all it is. It's like when it comes to computers, like plug and play. Or I'm going to teach you indirect. I'm going to teach you direct. We're going to do all these kind of drills. And all these things are going to help you, like, put your best foot forward. I'm not trying to clone myself on you. I'm not trying to create like mini Asian playboys and mini JTs, all right? I'm just trying to help you guys be your personal best. So I don't remember the specifics of exactly what I said to the people I met that night or that girl that I connected with, um, but I do remember that I was really nervous most of the night and it was very nerve wracking and a lot of it was not smooth. And, uh, but what really got me through it and what got me to, to having s such a great time was following the ABCs of Attraction structure um, and executing it the way that we were taught. 
So even though I was nervous, and even though I didn't really know what I was doing, and even if I thought, then there were many points in the evening where I did think that this was never going to work. I just stuck with it, and I continued to um, proceed through the steps of the ABCs of Attraction structure. And that's what got me to where I was. Well, the ABCs of Attraction Bootcamp is a three-day weekend intensive live training course. But even before my students show up to my class, we give them a pre-bootcamp home study course, which includes audio, video, written material with homework, because I know my students are Asian, they love homework. It is a full multimedia suite to get them started right now even before they show up to meet me. And we also do a coaching intake call with each and every single individual one of my students because we want to have a personal relationship with my students because I want them to be successful. Because to me, a teacher is only as good as his student's success. So when my students show up on Friday, we start class at 6 p.m. so that no one has to take off work or class, and we start off in a classroom portion. There's PowerPoint presentations, and we give them a workbook, and we go through drills and exercises. It's like the dry run before the real thing. And the great thing is like, we practice, and it's in a very safe environment so that they can practice and know what to do to get this handled right now before they actually go out and feel and talk to, you know, deal with scary situations and face the re possibility of rejection. Hi, my name is JT. Yes. What's your name? Patrick. Like that. All right. Let's go ahead and just practice with Alice one at a time. Hi, my name is Kevin. What's yours? Alice. Pleasure to meet you. You know, if you have to in order to fake that natural smile, if you have to, just tell yourself a dirty joke in your mind. Mm -hmm. Something that's just going to make you crack up laughing right before you walk up to that girl. So that the moment she turns around, all she sees is your happy smile. She has no idea what you're laughing at. I think that having a wing girl at my boot camp, you know, obviously we have to work out schedules, but it provides a female perspective because otherwise it's just a bunch of guys in a, in a locker room environment. Like we want to have that kind of female perspective and estrogen to show guys that, you know what, talking to girls is not scary, right? Because it's, it's obviously easier to practice for a girl, talking to her and then, you know, going out in the field and talk to other girls. But, yeah, with, with guys, sometimes it gets a little bit misogynistic if you're not careful and a little bit sexist. So I think that having my, my wing girls there, it, it, it's more healthy, to be honest. Like, they can actually talk to a real girl, an attractive real girl, and ask her questions and, and show them that girls, you know, beautiful women, they're just like us. And that's the entire point of one of the things that I do with the ABCs of Attraction is, you know, not putting women, you know, regardless of the race, on any kind of pedestal. Because there are a lot of guys that will put women on pedestals because they think, oh my gosh, she's, she's so much better than me, and I don't want to do that. And then there's some guys that put women, like, below them. They want to be that, that asshole bad boy. They go, oh, just treat them like shit. I don't believe that. I think we treat them as we would like ourselves to be treated, and so... I want them to connect with women and to show them that women are just like people, just like every single one of us. They get scared, they get anxious, so having a wing girl really, really helps in that department. Try to like smile right before you make eye contact because you do a smile afterwards. Okay, how's it turn? That's the first day and the first night is just approaching, right? Just getting over the anxiety is about A and B and the ABCDF system. On the second day, it's longer, it's a little bit more advanced. We go over more advanced body language tactics like BLP, which is body language positioning, but also more in depth conversational, like intimacy, when it comes to connecting genuinely with a woman. There's actually a scientifically uh, proven way that they've shown, psychologists have shown, that you can make almost anyone fall in love with you. And we do this by just connecting on an intimate level where we open up to her and she opens up to us. My name is JT. What's yours? Yes. If you have a very weak frame, you're just going to lose it. They're like, eh, whatever. 
Right. And that's where the idea behind the direct approach is it, it gets their attention um, right from the beginning. Okay. So just right. try to just do a more direct approach or whatever opener you want to use. I mean, you can do direct, um, but the key point is take control of the table, get their attention, look, smile, open, blah, 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 blah. either BT spike or engage them in a conversation, rather tear while you're talking, blah, 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 Hi, you girls look absolutely gorgeous tonight. I just had to come by and say hi. My name's Kevin, what's yours? Alice. Alice, pleasure to meet you. You, and you, and you. So Alice, where are you from? Atlanta. Atlanta? Oh wow, I've actually never been there myself, but I've heard wonderful things about it. <laughs> keep going, keep going. I've heard absolutely wonderful things about it. Uh, how does it uh, compare to uh, New York City? They're very similar, it's just a lot hotter down in Atlanta. A lot hotter, okay. Well, I mean, I would typically rather enjoy one while I'm hoping to get down there sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, it's okay. Try it again. It might be better for you when you're trying to grab a chair that's that far away to back up a little towards it while you're grabbing it rather than, you know, <laughs> do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. So, uh, Alice, I, uh, nice tattoos you got there on your right arm, but, um, do, do the ones on your left arm uh, happen to mean anything? That's the number pi out to 118 decimal places. Oh, the number pi out to 118 decimal places. Um, yes. In uh, what script? Arabic. Wow, in Arabic script. Do you happen to read Arabic yourself? Uh, to some degree, yes. Oh my gosh, we have a polyglot here. Chinese, Arabic, English obviously, and might I ask anywhere else? Uh, French. And French, there you go, <laughs> bilingual. Very impressive. Thank you. Right, cool. Um, <coughs> it's good. Much better, a lot better. You see the difference? Oh yeah. I know guys are scared of kissing, right, and, and, and when's the right way to do it and not do it in a creepy manner. And we teach that, absolutely. But also, a lot of guys are terrified of opening up emotionally to her and having that feeling of connection and intimacy. because. Being rejected for who you are is a lot worse than being rejected for just a bad approach, right? That's easy to fix. But the thing is, like I said, there is a way to form that intimate connection with another person so that you don't have to face rejection. It's a big night, gentlemen. You guys ready? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. You ready to talk to some girls? Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. Really proud of my students after this weekend. They have advanced and transformed so much and getting such positive results. Like Nigel, for instance, his hair transformation and his fashion, and the fact that he got his first kiss clothes using Ralph's 4P kiss clothes. Like these guys have so much raw potential. I am looking forward to all of their success stories in the near future. There was a set of four girls, which I just walked up to them and I approached them. I just followed the framework. So whenever I had a brain fart, like if I just forgot whatever I was saying, I just kept on with the whole program, the whole um, A, B, C, D, E, F curve. I'm going to start touching the girl more and more. So as, as JD says, like from outside to inside. So first I started off with the um, shoulders, just putting my arms on the shoulders like this, and I slowly wrapping around and then moving down the arms, bringing it down closer to closer, bringing it down nearer and nearer to the arm. And then uh, from there, um, get her hands on my lap. And then from that point onwards, get my hands on her knee. And then slowly just bringing it up. And then finally, when I just got a number, and then I just gave her a hug and final kiss. So I think it was four kisses. Yeah. So on the second night, it's time to go out. You know, the goal tonight is for the guys to start making out with girls, right? And I was, I was kind of worried out. I didn't know if like they would actually do their goal. So we get into the club and the guys are doing super well, like right from the get-go. I was really surprised. Uh, the guys were isolating girls, starting to do a little bit of sexual escalation. The person I was most surprised about though was Nigel. He was crushing it. He was just talking to every single girl he saw. He was getting numbers, and then he was actually making out with a girl by the end of the night. 
And this was a guy, this was a fobby ass dude, you know, just 24 hours ago. And tonight he was like the most suave dude ever. On the last day, it's a complete sort of different class in the fact that we take them out during the day so that they can meet women at any situation, whether it's a mall, the library, school campus, on the street, because you don't know where the future mother of your child could be. She could be at school, she could be at church, she could be at work, she could be walking down the street, she could be at Whole Foods, wherever. And you have to be prepared, because she could be anywhere, and you have to be ready for meeting the love of your life. And if you aren't, you know. You might not be able to meet her ever again, but hopefully with what my students learned during my boot camp, they can meet the future mother of their child and love of their life anywhere at any time that they want. So after JT's boot camp, I learned several things. One of them is I learned about my body language and what it means to other people. Um, second thing I learned is about fashion sense. And finally, I learned just to stand tall. Stand tall, be confident, and just walk up there and be funny. The boot camp has been well, strenuous, but extremely informative, very, very helpful in pointing out my, uh, my own flaws, uh, such that I can better improve myself so I can keep moving forward. And also it's been very motivating to keep, to keep trying. I mean, it's very easy to, to get discouraged. I mean, this field does play with a lot of emotions, so. In order to keep working so that, I mean, eventually everything will cement and one will have, be able to work with the system better and get to the result. So I found out that JT Tran was presiding over William's wedding. And it was fascinating that William and his wife would allow JT to preside over their wedding because it it's a pickup instructor. Like, why would you want your pickup instructor to, to preside over your wedding with your, with your wife there, right? But however, it just goes to show that William obviously had a huge impact from the program and he learned a lot and it goes to say that uh, the ABCs is very family friendly. <laughs> it's wifey approved. Yeah, it's wifey approved. <laughs> Alright, wifey approved. ABCs of attraction. Alright, there you go. This day marks the first day of the rest of our lives together. This is the 1863rd day since I've met you, and from this day forward, but actually starting many, many days back, I've chosen to give my heart to you. And when you are down, I am now, and will always be there to give you warmth, a supporting hand, and my eager years. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Lee. So I went out one night to a nightclub, and I was with my usual guy friends that I go hang out with on any typical weekend to go to just go out meet girls. And she was there with some of her friends and they were having some kind of girls night out. So I see this beautiful girl across the room and I just go over and I start talking to her. And as soon as I got into conversation with her, then I, I was connecting with her and I got to know her better and I felt really comfortable with her. And she was a very attractive, uh, you know, high quality girl that you would want to spend a lot of time with and that you'd want to have an extended relationship with. Because at that point in time, I met plenty of attractive girls that you would not want to spend your life with and that you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with. But she was one of the girls that I did want to. So then I, and I met her and I also knew how to act on that. I knew how to talk to her and, and how to um, interact with her in a way that would not lead it down a path of a one night stand only and then we would just say goodbye to each other. Like I had enough experience from taking the boot camp uh, with JT and learning the ABCs of attraction structure and, and knowing how to talk to her and romance her in that way that it would go in that direction. So my first impression of William, I thought he was incredibly confident when he walked up to me to introduce himself um, and when I first met him he was wearing this super tight black shirt with an E.T. Um, image on the t-shirt and he was wearing a, a earring. I think I forgot on which year. Um, and he just, you know, exuded a lot of energy and um, he was very, he was just very confident. We can all see why 
Chose William. Right. He's he's in great shape. He's a good-looking guy. <laughs> he has a great smile. He's confident. He's you know he's charismatic and social. He he has so many achieve achievements. For thousands of years, lovers have exchanged rings as a token of their vows. Let these rings be a symbol of your eternal love. Well, I've met you back in 2011. You've been one of the biggest inspirations for me in my life in terms of, you know, what you did before. Hello, this is Johnny. Uh, congratulations to William and Pierre. Yes, congratulations to him. Yeah, and happy wedding. Happy wedding. Hey, this is Eugene. Congratulations, William. Um, you guys are going to have an excellent life and uh, make tons of babies. You guys are very happy tonight and I have no doubt that you guys will be happy for a very long time. So again, congratulations. Thank you for opening up your home and your heart city. It really was a lot. Uh, you guys are unique, you guys are special and best wishes. I was going to say good luck, but you guys definitely know you. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, I wish you all the best. Yeah, it's so awesome to share you know, our lives together. They're so similar yet they're so different. You're on the East Coast, we're on the West Coast, and you know, we're, we have new lives, uh, new adventures to go and do, and uh, having a great time. Thank you very much for a wonderful wedding. I hope you have a great day. Listen, today was not only the best day of the year so far for me, it's been one of the best days of my life. I, I'm like, if I'm a fraction as happy as you guys are, then I'm like bursting out of my socks. So, congratulations, many happy years ahead. I just feel like when she's there, there's, there's like a part of me that's always like warm inside, and I just feel so good when we're together, doing things together, cooking together, uh, doing fun stuff together, going on super awesome dates. I just always feel good. And then when she's not there, then I miss her. I know everybody has enjoyed the sound of my voice. Oh, yeah. But let me give you one last very important announcement given to you by your bride and groom. Everybody, thank you so much for coming here and sharing this very special day with me and my wife. We are so happy that you could be a part of it. Unlike some of the few people here that have given to us, I will not be making fun of William. In fact, I will be celebrating what William has become. And here's the thing. Before this wedding, he told me that if it wasn't for me, there would be no wedding. And here's the thing. That's a lie. Sorry. That is a lie. Alright? All I did in helping him was to show him the door. He was there to grab the ring of destiny. He was there to find that bright, shining star. So, a teacher is only as good as his student. And I said to you, the student has to pass the master. And one of these days, perhaps soon, I'll be coming to him for marriage advice. And who knows? Maybe parenting it was. Such a way on my way. Thanks for coming. So good to see you all. <laughs>
it's basically just go out there and, and try to meet as many girls as possible. Um, which kind of sounds like the opposite of what my goal was, which is to be married, which I am now. But uh, that is exactly what I did before I met Winnie. And, um, you know, the process of going out there and learning how to meet girls and romance girls and talk to girls and, and getting all that experience in dating, that is what actually gave me the ability to discern, okay, this is the girl that I want to be with. Because without that perspective, there's no way for me to say, I'm going to choose this girl and I know that this is the one I want to be with. I would just be guessing otherwise. Right. And this is not something that I want to be guessing about. Like, I actively choose her, and that's the end of it. And I think for any guy who's trying to figure this out, they need to get to the point where they can choose someone. And the only way to do that is they'd have to get that experience, that dating experience first. What do you think that guys who are looking for relationships, what, what do you want to tell them? Uh, if you don't currently know how to how to meet lots of girls and get lots of dates and, and socialize with women easily and comfortably all the time, if you cannot do that all the time, then you gotta call JT. You gotta get it done, you gotta get the skills, get the practice, and get it done. That's the only way. All right, say goodbye. See ya, bye. So even though I was just observing the boot camp, I actually did learn a few tips here and there to improve my dating life as well. Uh, I changed my hairstyle, which was cool. And I feel like the guys really learned a lot. So if you're an Asian guy that wants to improve your dating life, then definitely check out JT Trans Bootcamp. Welcome to New York. We are here to do a program to change some lives. Are you ready to touch some girls? Oh, oh yeah. yes. These guys have so much raw potential. Maybe you want to get a girlfriend. Maybe you want to get multiple girlfriends. Maybe you want to get married like William. I'm not here to tell you which choice to make. I can approach women easily, but I find that it's hard for me to escalate it. I have some trouble sexually escalating. If you aren't used to socializing, or if you feel that American society treats you like a second-class citizen, then the act of meeting someone outside of your race, much less an attractive woman, can be terrifying to the extreme. Am I going to die single? That is a really, really depressing place to be. Everything I learned through hard work and painful embarrassment and humiliation, as well as successes and victories. Went out to the nightclub, turned off all of the self-limiting beliefs, and just went out there and just did it. So I was experimenting with all different kinds of ways to get girls to come back to my apartment. <laughs> and on, on one night, I just decided, you know what, screw this. I'm gonna try the absolute worst possible extraction line that I can think of to get some girl to come back to my apartment. Because we already had a date. It was awesome. So Actually, even before the date, it was awesome. I met her in a nightclub. We had a great connection. We were having a lot of fun. We went out to a dinner, and it was great food, great conversation. Everything was awesome. We're laughing, having a good time. And then after we left the restaurant, we're like walking in the direction of the train station where we basically go our own separate ways. So I just turned her and I said, so how about some consensual sex? <laughs> that in my mind is the worst possible thing you could ever say to a girl at that point in the evening. But she said, okay, sure. Where do you live?
William, it's Albert again. Thanks a lot for having me as your best man. It was an honor and a lot of fun. But right now I have another wedding to go to, my own. And you and JT are invited. Thanks a lot, JT. For everyone else watching, stay tuned for more. Hey there, thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.